In today's show, we're looking at players who are on perhaps unsustainable hot streaks. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Let's look at some players now who over the last week have been perhaps outperforming what our rest of season expectations may be. Let's talk about them right now. Starting off with Category Leagues and O'Shea Brissett has been obviously playing at an extremely high level. 22nd ranked player over the last week. 35 minutes a night, averaging 14.5 points, hitting three threes, nine boards with three blocks per game. Now, obviously that is extraordinarily good. A true shooting of 62% because he's hitting 50% of his threes as well. And we did start to see the come down In that last game where he had just the 10 points, played 26 minutes, shot 29% and didn't have a block. But prior to that, he did have 12 blocks in his last three games Um, with double digit rebounds in two of those games, good scoring and hitting his threes at, you know, phenomenally high rates. I, I still maintain with Brissett that I just don't know what's going to happen when Lamb, Goga, Brogdon all return. I'm not expecting Turner and Warren to be there at all. Obviously, Warren's out. But with so much of the value that Brissett was getting coming from that center position, um, we saw a drop off with uh, Sabonis back. And then uh, I think if Goga returns and then Brogdon returns, pushing other players to other positions, I am a little bit worried about where he goes from here. I also feel really confident in saying he's not going to average three blocks per game, nor is he going to be a 50% three-point shooter when yeah, he's only shooting 76 from the line. So it's it's been great for Brissett, absolutely fantastic. You know, to get a guy off the waiver wire who's been top forty over the last two weeks, you just can't find that shit anywhere. Like nobody provides that sort of uh, that sort of value as a waiver wire player. I just don't really see how that's going to be able to continue for for numerous reasons. Rajon Rondo I didn't think he'd be a name I'd be talking about, but um, in the last week, it's only two games for Rondo. He's the twenty eighth ranked player. And the question you'll probably have is how? And I have the same question. And the answer to that is I'm not really sure. But it's because he's hitting 60% of his shots, which includes 75% of his twos. Now, uh, good old Rajon, not the most prolific shooter. Um, So to say that's an outlier is, is an understatement. He's also averaging six assists with two steals. His usage is up at 21%, which is just not a Rajon Rondo number. He's um, averaging uh, half a block. Amazingly, this year, I think he's missed one free throw for the entire year. And for reference, he uh, hit 64% last season. Now, if we're going to be fair about the numbers, he's attempted 11 free throws. So he's 10 of 11. So you miss three in a row and then your uh, your numbers come down pretty quickly. But he has been you know, uh, significantly better in that area than you'd expect. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Now, his ability to generate assists does have value in fantasy leagues. I am a little bit curious as to how his minutes look when uh, Patrick Beverly returns, which is going to be next game, perhaps. But Rondo's played some pretty decent minutes in the last week or so. 30, 25, 22, and 22 in his last four games. I'm not certain that that continues. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it won't. But he is getting a lot of playing time. And if he gets 20-plus minutes a night, there can be some value. But... We're not valuing him as a top 30 guy, top 50 guy, or even a top 100 guy. Should probably not even a top 150 player, but his ability to get assists is something that can be useful. It's been a wild ride with Ravishing Rick Rubio. Up and down, minutes all over the place. We had this stretch where he played 32, 23, 30, 29 minutes. We went, all right, must roster time for Rubio. Then he played 20, 21, and 17 minutes. And he went, okay, drop him. And then he played 31 and 32. So, you know, I I criticize coaches for inconsistency all the time. And I've probably been a bit lenient on Chris Finch because that makes no sense, my guy. Um, Just stick to what you're doing with Rubio. 
Now, I, I do believe that Rubio is is probably a better point guard for that starting lineup than what D'Angelo Russell is. But the fact that he's playing 30 plus minutes while Russell's playing at 28 to 30 minutes a night and they're overlapping is very intriguing. And the last two games for Rick, he's had 26, 6 and 6 and then 11, 3 and 7 with 6 steals. He's also shot 50% from the field in those two games. In 8 steals in 2 games is always going to boost your value up. I haven't even mentioned that he's the 19th ranked player over the last week. Averaging 13, 4, and 6 with 2.7 steals. And even if you bring it back to the last two weeks, he's the 77th ranked player, averaging 9, 3.5, and 5.5 and and with 2 steals. But, yeah, over that time, he's hitting 40% instead of 50% from the field. So there is going to be some level of drop-off here from Ravishing Rick Rubio. And the worry you have, or the worry that I have that I'm relaying to you, is that you know, do the minutes go to 22? Or do they stay at 30? Like, where are they? Like, wh- wh- what is this playing time going to be? as we move forward, because it is rather confusing to see the ups and downs. And he's on a real hot streak at the moment, for sure. But I just don't see how that's going to have any chance of really continuing. And that would make him the Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And Rick Rubio is definitely making making you enjoy rostering him. He is definitely worth it at the moment, just like Michelob Ultra, which has 2.6 grams of carbs and just 95 calories. Joy creates success. And is there a more joyful player in the NBA than Ricky Rubio? I doubt it. Enjoyment isn't the end game. It is the whole game. So get that happiness. Turn your face around. Smile. Be happy, as Ricky Rubio once said. Are you happy because you win or do you win because you're happy? Your Michelob Ultra Player of the Week is Ravishing Rick Rubio. All right, Kelly Olenek, I ha- I just, he has to be included. Um, he's the 10th ranked player over the last two weeks. I want to talk about blokes from the Rockets that you picked off the waiver wire that are going to win you a league. It's him. Um, you know that I've spoken highly of Kelly Olenek all season. In fact, plenty of you listening or watching this have criticized me for speaking highly of Kelly Olenek all season. And you, part of my thing with him in Miami was, is when he plays 30 minutes, you roster him, but then Spolster goes on like a week stretch of playing him 22 minutes and you drop him. And as soon as the minutes trend back up, you pick him back up. Well, in Houston, we don't get those dips. We just get 30 plus minutes every night. And he's actually turned things on in a massive, massive way. Over the last two weeks, he's averaging 19 and nine, four and a half assists with two steals, with a true shooting of 66%, and that is including him only hitting 31% of his threes. So it actually could get better. He's hitting 67% of his twos, which is a constant number all season. The free throws are excellent. He's getting to the line a shit ton. His usage is up. He's passing. He's doing actually everything. And while I look at this and go, top 20 over the last month, top 10 over the last two weeks is unrealistic. Is it though? Is it? Maybe it isn't. Like, what's what's wrong with, what's what's not going to happen with what he's doing? Maybe it's the assists. It's probably the two steals per game. But shit, the usage, the scoring, the efficiency, I, I don't really see that changing too much. I think it will drop from top 10 to top 35 to top 40. But still, he has been absolutely unbelievable in Houston. And let's talk Boyan Bogdanovich. It's been an absolute roller coaster from Bogdanovich. He's just, just snuck the tip over the top 150 over the last week or so. He's now 144th for the season. A huge disappointment on where he was drafted. Um, and that's in large part due to his play over the last two weeks. And last week in particular, he's the 50th ranked player over the last week. Why? 26 points per game, hitting 53% of his shots. And there's your answer. Like he's hitting 48% of his twos for the year. And he's up to 65 over the last week. Now, it has been a steady improvement after what was an absolutely shitful beginning to the season. He's at 54% from two over the, the last month with a true shooting of 61%. So that it's really starting to ramp up. And we know that he doesn't do anything else. But 20 points per game over the last 17 games with a true shooting of 61. Yeah, with five free throw attempts per game. It's really, really impressive. And it's not just because Donovan Mitchell is out. He's upped his usage. Some of that's because Mitchell's out, but he's upped his efficiency as well. And he looks more like the player that we saw last season when he was the 79th ranked player or the year before in Indiana, where he's the 94th ranked player, rather than this guy who's been you know, unrosterable for the first two to three months of the season. Is it unsustainable what Bogdanovich is doing? Maybe there's a little bit in terms of the 65% two-point shooting. That's possibly and almost definitely going to come down, but he's getting back to normal. And I think that's huge. 
Let's look at points leagues, guys. Now, the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay, is the 25th ranked points league player over the last two weeks. I feel like we can say with a level of confidence that Mason Plumley, Corey Joseph, Jeremy Grant, Wayne Ellington won't play this season. They've rested four games in a row now. Like, my guys, Detroit, just say they're not playing. Bay is averaging 35 minutes over the last three. 42 fantasy points, 22 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, 1.7 steals on a 24 usage. That 24 usage is what's really intriguing for me with all those guys out. So while I look at the 42 points and go, yeah, that's high, how high actually is it? Can he be a 30-plus fantasy point guy the rest of the way? Four more games this week. It is going to depend on whether they bring Grant back, which they're not, but there's a lot of... um, a lot of value in what Bay is doing at the moment, and some of it is unsustainable, but some of it isn't, and some of it is situationally dependent. Let's talk about Rowan Barrett, who is a much better points league player than category league player, 79th ranked uh, points league player for the season, averaging 30 points per game. But over the last week, that's gone up. Now, that's because he is playing 39 minutes a game, but he's at 38.5 fantasy points per game, 19 and 7. His assists are up to almost 5 per game, but importantly, He's had four steals over that time, those three games. And th- that's important for a bloke that normally in that time frame would get two. And that's a, a thing that does turn it around quite a bit. His steal and block numbers remain really low for the season. But you know, upping your assists, upping your steals, upping your rebounds, and upping your scoring in the fantasy finals week, shit, what more can you ask for? Again, this is a, a really, really solid top 100, top 80, top 70 points league sort of player. Category leagues are getting nowhere near that because of his uh, lack of defensive stats and lack of percentages at times. But he is putting together a nice little run at the time that you need it the most. Jason Tatum's the fourth-ranked points league player over the last week. He's averaging 59. That's uh, obviously awesome. 41 minutes a game, not sustainable. 43 points per game, not sustainable. Six assists, probably not sustainable. 0.3 steals, that's really low. But to be to be honest... He is averaging 1.1 steals for the year, but just 0.6 over the last month, the steals have completely disappeared from Tatum. Now, the usage is way up. It it is obviously on the back of that 60-point performance in 45 minutes of the Spurs that his numbers are this high. But he has been rolling over the last month. There's no doubt about that. But there is a big difference between 47 points per game over the last month and 59 over the last week. I think we look at him as a 45-point guy pretty comfortably. So, you know, top... 12 to top 15, maybe top 10. But getting into that top five level is really tough. He's doing it at the moment. I just don't see how that's going to continue. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing, and you can track all of that action at Bet Online. Get all of the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, and all of your UFC action. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. This is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs into the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using the promo code Locked On. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. O'Shea Brissett, again in points leagues, going off 39 fantasy points per game over the last week, 38 over the last two weeks. We talked about why that's probably not going to sustain, so just keep an eye on where his value lies, and he might become droppable. And the other guy we've got to talk about is Kent Bazemore, who over the last two weeks is averaging 39 fantasy points per game. That's good for 39th in that time frame. Now, I don't think that Kelly Oubre is coming back this regular season. Damian Lee's dealing with the health and safety protocols. But I also don't think that Kent Bazemore is going to average 3.5 steals per game, which is obviously the reason for that big jump. He can be a 28 fantasy point per game guy easily. Even 30 points per game, he could do it. He's rebounding at a supremely high level, nine boards over the last four games, nine boards, uh, sorry, average. He's scoring 11 points, but 1.5 blocks, 3.5 steals. They are big numbers. That, even that nine rebounds is insane. He's averaging 3.4 for the season. So while he's doing a lot, he's going to start, he's going to get good minutes. There are a few things there which look highly unsustainable. And if you had any ability to, to sell him high, you'd have absolutely be looking into it. But putting together some good numbers at the right time of the season, and he is a guy to roster with a game on Tuesday. And then Thursday, Saturday, the Warriors also play. Guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget, follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Well, on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Hit the thumbs up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.